Hello and welcome to the Mindful Times community. My name is Demi and today I just wanted to make a quick video. Um, if you don't already follow my podcast, I highly recommend going to check it out. Uh, I will leave a link in the description below. Basically what I do is I try to um, if I ever do a blog post, I try to have the blog post so that people can read it. And then I also turn that into a podcast so that people can listen if that's easier for them. And then now I've just started incorporating more videos on YouTube so that you guys can see me and get to know me a little more personally on here. So I just put a blog post and podcast up about connection in sobriety and in your recovery. And so I just wanted to make a quick video, you know, touching on that topic. When I, my sobriety journey is long and there was a lot of, you know, trying to get sober and failing for a very long time. And when I was trying to get sober before and I was in my last relationship, it was kind of complicated because the relationship that I was in fueled my drinking in many ways <laughs> and the person that I was dating also you know had a problem with alcohol but was not ready to at all admit it and definitely not ready to acknowledge you know the underlying causes of the substance abuse and so for me trying to get sober, it was so hard because, you know, I would have these crazy blackouts and just have crazy things happen, like hurting myself and having to go to the ER and in an ambulance and all these just like crazy things. And every time these things would happen, my support system was basically my family, like my, my dad, because he lives here in Utah with me. Um, my mom who lives in California and my ex who I was dating at the time and then his family. So it was extremely hard because every time this would happen, they were my support system. But at the time, like they didn't really know much about you know, addiction and recovery and what that meant and methods and what would be best and neither did I so we all knew that something needed to change but we didn't know what to do and so I mean this would happen time and time again and each time it was like so much harder so much more isolating I felt like I could talk to these people but they didn't really understand because they didn't really know how I was feeling and so it just yeah it was super lonely and I started seeking out therapy because I knew that I had trauma that I needed to work through that was you know resulting in these really um, toxic behaviors and so I started going to therapy but there was a few issues with therapy so First, finding the right therapist. Um, I remember when I lived in Park City, I went to a therapist and I told her right out the get-go that I wasn't interested in any medications, that I wanted to try to figure things out uh, with a natural approach. And when I kind of told her some of my past and some of my behavior, at the end of us meeting, she told me that she would recommend, you know, seeing a doctor and maybe trying out different medications. And I got so pissed. I left her office abruptly in anger. I remember going to my car and just like sobbing. Because that's exactly what I didn't want. I didn't feel like I needed medication. I needed help dealing with my trauma. And so I had multiple... I. I didn't give up. I kept trying different therapists. A lot of therapists just wanted to do talk therapy, which I think there are so many benefits to talk therapy. 
but in my head, I wanted results. And I had already, you know, told my story and talked to different therapists about what I had gone through and what I was dealing with. And I felt like I just didn't want to talk about it anymore. I wanted to figure out a solution and how to get past it. So I started to get frustrated and, you know, it's hard. It's hard when you're trying to find a therapist that you click with. And also, like, therapy is super expensive. So I was trying to find therapists that were in my insurance network so that I wouldn't have to pay so much out of pocket and to find somebody that was in my location. So there were just so many factors to therapy. And I finally found someone who I clicked with and felt comfortable with. And at the time, I had a 9-to-5 job that I was working in an office. And the therapist that I was seeing, she her hours were 9 to 5, you know, Monday through Friday. And so I had to miss work to go see her. And, you know, we were talking about the trauma that I had gone through. And I'd have this, like, super deep and emotional therapy session and then have to go back to work, which was really hard. And the other thing that was tricky with therapy was... Therapists get pretty booked up, especially the one that I was seeing. And so sometimes I would have to wait, you know, weeks until I can get in to see her. And my emotions at the time were just a roller coaster and I never knew what to expect. I never knew when like some emotion or feeling was going to come up. And I sometimes would panic because I knew that I couldn't just get in right away to see her. I had to, you know, wait until my next appointment. She was busy. And... Really, all I needed was somebody to vent to or talk to, and I didn't feel like the people I had in my life really understood what I was going through. And so I really, really, at that time, could have benefited from an online community or an online support system like what I've created, which is the Mindful Times uh, Sobriety Support Group. And... That's not the only one out there. There are so many online support groups and forums. You just have to find the one that you like most that works best for you. And I just, I really could have used that at the time because, I mean, how nice would it have been if I could have just hopped online at any time and just vented how I was feeling to a group of supportive people who weren't going to judge me. And, I mean, the chances of me getting you know, a response is so much higher and so much faster than having to wait until my next therapy appointment that could be weeks out. So I just strongly encourage you to find a online support group that works for you. And I do just have a few more um, suggestions for finding support and connection. So another one would be AA, and I say this even though I chose not to go the AA 12-step route, I have still been to a handful of meetings, especially in the past when I had tried to get sober and felt like that was the last resort that I had to go to AA or else it wasn't going to happen. I did go to a handful of them, and... You know, honestly, I think that I just didn't find the right group that I felt comfortable with uh, for many different reasons or different factors, but I just, at this point, um, since, like, being sober and staying sober, I was actually able this time around to quit cold turkey, and that is mainly because... So I had tried so many times getting sober and failed. I probably could have used AA back then, but this time around, I actually changed my entire environment. I got out of the three-year toxic relationship that I was in. I moved. I quit my job and got a new one. I stopped hanging out with my drinking friends, like so many big changes I made all at once. And that is the reason that I was able to quit cold turkey and stay sober. Had I not done that, I would have had a lot harder time, you know, staying away from alcohol and AA 
probably could have really helped me if I found the right group. But AA, I know a lot of people who have used it, and I think it is one of the most effective tools for recovery. One, because they help you get to the root the root causes of your addiction and help you really heal those things. And two is they offer, you know, support in a community, which is what we're talking about here. And so I think that those two things are extremely important. And so if you haven't tried AA, I highly recommend it. And as well as myself, I, the more it's, ironic, but the farther along I get in my sobriety, the more I find myself uh, considering the idea of actually going to AA and the possibility of going through the 12 steps just because I really do like the really deep step work that they are doing there. And I think that I could really benefit from it if I found the right group. So another thing I would recommend is Finding a connection to a higher power. Now, don't let the term higher power completely shut you down. Like, hear me out. Higher power can be so many different things. It doesn't have to be God. It doesn't have to be religious. A higher power can literally be your connection with music or nature. Or for me, it's my higher self, my spirit guides, my angels. Um, It can really be so many things. So I hate that when, you know, people say a higher power, it like completely shuts some people down and it doesn't have to be that way. Um, A higher power can come in so many different forms. You just have to find what resonates with you and what feels best to you. But connecting with a source or power or any, something that's just bigger than you that makes you feel love and support and connection that is something that is so important to us as humans and so important in our sobriety and in our recovery so really when it comes down to it the most important thing is to just find what works best for you the awesome thing is that the sobriety community is becoming bigger like there are so many more tools for us now more than ever And I've seen things like meditation meetings. AA even has a meditation meeting now. And I've seen yoga classes and these different activities that are now being tailored specifically for people in recovery, which is so awesome. I actually held my own um, meditation. It was a sobriety and meditation meeting. It was a couple weeks ago, and I did it with my very good friend Cambria. She is a Reiki master and she just recently uh, did a teacher training for Kundalini yoga. So I am so into like the healing power of these things. And yeah, it was so great. We, we sat in a circle and we went around and shared our stories and just got so like vulnerable with each other, with strangers. It was so amazing. And we meditated and I can't stress the importance in finding these things. Whatever feels best for you, you just have to find connection. You got to find the people that are going through similar things as you that understand you. And I think um, meditation and All that kind of stuff is honestly so good if that feels good for you. But yes, at this point, you just have to try new things, be open. Uh, I think a lot of us probably have some social anxiety that we need to get past. But just knowing that these people are in the same boat as you and understand just makes it so much easier to get out and connect. So... I am just so proud. I am so proud of us as a community. I am so proud of you for taking the time to watch this video and invest in yourself and your sobriety. And I can't thank you enough for your continued support. And yeah, please, if you enjoy this video, please subscribe to my channel. It means so much to me. 
And if you haven't yet checked out the podcast, um, go ahead and give that a listen. I'll leave a link in the description below. And there's also the blog at www.mindfultimes.co. So if it's easier for you to read this stuff and share it on your social platforms, I really appreciate that as well. I really feel passionately about getting this message out there and just letting people know that they are not alone, that we have this wonderful Mindful Times community that they can be a part of. And I try to really just give you so many avenues, whether it's reading the blog, watching the YouTube videos, or listening to the podcast. I try to make it all available so that you have different forms. So that, again, thank you so much. Please subscribe. Love you guys. See you next time.